believe in the long-term health and viability of the community. Lots of trees coming to Dublin here where the city has planned to help the community stay green. And some Peach County Middle Schoolers won an art contest, how they stood out from students across 17 counties in this week's School of the Week. Well, good Friday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look at LAX in California. The time is now 6.30 a.m. here on this January the 6th. I'm Wanye Reese. And I'm Caitlin Heck. A lot of people are going to be flying into LAX over the next couple of days to watch the dogs play. Yep, that's right. Our very own Marvin James and Connor, they are actually on their way right now to LA. They're going to have live team coverage for us. I cannot wait. Awesome assignment. Oh, yeah. I'm so jealous. But I know it's <laughs> going to be a good time for them. Although, uh, Alex, the weather out there is going to be a little wilder than it is here. Jealous of them because our weather is going to be great compared to what they're going to be dealing with in California. We've got 60s on the way for the day of the national championship. They're going to be dealing with something similar, but with rain. And I tell you what, rain and L.A. do not mix well out there in California. So it'll be interesting to hear about that. Waking up to 39 and making 42 in Warner Robins, 36 in Dublin, 38 in Wrightsville and 41 in Sandersville. Some 5 to 10 degrees colder across central Georgia this morning than we were yesterday morning. Uh, 31 minutes after 6 a.m. It's quiet across the southeast this morning. So if you say if you're flying to LA, it's smooth air through at least uh, Oklahoma or so running into some rainfall out there and then probably some more disturbances once you get over towards say, the Arizona area out the door today back here in central Georgia. High average high is 59 forecasting a high of 59 to come your way here right around 4 p.m. Sunrise this morning is at 738 again this high much closer to average than we were yesterday if not right at average. Maybe we should get that light fixed to LAX. Great weather on the day <laughs> for the day ahead today Saturday as well as some sprinkles Sunday night. We'll take a look at future view and talk about it all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Alex. We're going to get working on that light. <laughs> all right. Now the Macon Water Authority says flooding is an issue that's been around for decades. Over the summer, they brainstormed some possible fixes, though. Well, now they have to wait a little bit longer for a solution. Michelle Wana with MWA told Mike told a small group of South Bend neighbors the holdup is actually not a local issue. It's an issue with the Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA. Wana says since there are wetlands in the area, the national agencies need to sign off on that work. So anytime it rains, it leaves many in South Bibb with flooded yards and roads. Mandy Purvis lives on Bankston Lake Road. She says water rushes through her yard when it rains, leaving a mound of silt and mud in the driveway. I've had a contractor come out to clear that once. It cost us about $1,000 to clear the silt pile and um, stand our fence back up and, you know, kind of strengthen that fence back to where it won't happen every time it rains. A purpose says even though her house isn't in a flood zone, she and her husband bought flood insurance this year and estimates they've spent almost $2,000 mm. in fixes and insurance so far. Juana says once the Army Corps and FEMA sign off on the work, they'll dig additional drainage ditches and a retaining pond. The Macon Water Authority's new chairman, Gary Bechtel, wants to make sure that people know situations like that heavy flooding are why they collect stormwater fees. This is something that is, is uh, necessary uh, for because most of the stormwater runs off into the river. Bechtel was sworn in yesterday, taking over for Sam Hart, who served as chair for eight years before retiring last year. Bechtel won a June runoff against Desmond Brown, who resigned from his District 2 seat to run for chairman. Brown won re-election in his old seat after a December runoff against Lindsey Holiday. He was sworn in yesterday along with Frank Patterson and Anissa Jones. 6.33 now on your Friday morning. Tomorrow, the Okmulgee River is predicted to rise to 22 feet due to raised water levels caused by heavy rain earlier in the week. If you're looking at your screen, you'll see where the water is predicted to rise by the weekend. Michael Glisson, Macon Bibbs Director of Parks and Beautification, says this happens several times a year, usually due to heavy rains up north. Right now, they have parts of Amerson River Park closed off, also the Spring Street boat ramp, and parts of the Okmulgee Heritage Trail. We just ask people, use your common sense, don't come through these closures. Just, you know, give us a few days and we'll have everything back right. Some good information. Glisten says that the river should be down by Monday, then they'll go ahead and get everything cleaned up at that point. And because of those rising river levels at the Okmulgee, certain parts of Amerson River Park are still closed. The National Weather Service says river levels in the park have reached about 18.65 feet, considerably higher than the river's normal level of 7 to 9 feet. Some boat ramps, dirt, and paved trails will all be closed until the river levels will lower. And a National Weather Service team confirmed that Wednesday's storm that ripped through Sandersville was a tornado, an EF1. Thankful to them and for all that they do and the people they support and help and all the churches that are involved in this through the Baptist ministry there. Randy Hilton and his wife are both 80 and they've lived in their home since 1987. 
They're grateful the only major damage happened to their yard. People from Georgia Baptist Convention Disaster Relief came in to help them clean up. Another EF1 tornado was confirmed in Heard County in West Georgia. Right now, the Warner Robins Police Department continues to face staffing challenges even after offering up their part time program. So last September, Mayor LaRonda Patrick and then Police Chief John Wagner announced the creation of the program to alleviate some stress on the department. They had hoped to add 15 post certified officers to go out on calls, but over the last four months, that program has stalled. Lieutenant Eric Gossman says the department's leadership changes have slowed down the process. We've had a change of command, so that kind of slowed that down. And But uh, Interim Chief Fisher has been going forward with creating the policy that would um, govern how that program would work within the Warner Robins Police Department. Gosman says the policy will go to HR for review. The police department currently has 32 open positions for sworn officers. Well, something is growing in Dublin, 1,000 trees. Dublin Mayor Joshua Kite created the initiative to bring a little more green into town. Mayor Kite says it's about planting for the future and investing in the community. You're doing it because you believe in the long-term health and viability of the community and that you want something better, not just for you as you live here now, but for your kids and for your grandkids. Kine says a lot of the trees they're planting are oak trees, the reason they take longer to mature. He says the oak tree is a symbol of a long-term commitment to Dublin. Lindsay Newman with the Tree Board says trees have a lot of benefits like providing shade and reducing air pollution. From a city perspective, we'll focus on parks and right-of-ways to provide shade for people, but really we want citizen involvement with this, so we're open to any suggestions as well. Americine says he hopes it's just the first step in the beautification of Dublin. It's Friday and we're celebrating Central Georgia School of the Week. We'll find out what school we're honoring this week coming up next. Plus, the Bulldogs take on L.A. on Monday. Coming up, we'll tell you where you can find an attraction honoring the dogs around here that you might just want to go check out. <laughs> Time is 637. Cannot wait for the big game on Monday. Ready? I wish I was going to L.A. though. I do <laughs> wish that. Exactly. I'm excited for it as well. You know, I'm a bulldog by association, yes, so are. I'm definitely going to be staying up a little bit later on Monday so I can watch the big game. Well, I think everybody in the whole state is going to be staying <laughs> up later on Monday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a really good game. And you know what? I got to point out the semifinal games this year. In fact, a lot of the bowl games were really good games. Like yes. yes. they were not blowouts. Like it was mm -hmm. up until the very end. So I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, that's 730 at SoFi Stadium there in Southern California. And I'll tell you what, the weather's going to be a lot nicer here in Central Georgia, then it's going to be out there. We'll talk about it in just a second. Here's a live look over downtown. 39, the current number with a very light wind at 6 miles an hour out of the west. We've got a mix of 30s and 40s this morning. 39 in Macon, 42 in Warner Robins, 48 in Thomaston, 41 over in Butler, 39 in Unadilla and in Cordill this morning. Uh, below freezing up in Blue Ridge at 41 in Atlanta. So believe it or not, we're actually kind of cooler in Macon than in Atlanta right now. And then 40s down along the coast as well. 20s once you get up into the nation's midsection. 18 whole degrees in Denver, Colorado right now. Glad we are not there. Radar picture is quiet across central Georgia this morning. It will remain quiet through the day today. Temperatures finding their way into the 50s by the noon hour, upper 50s later on this afternoon. I've got a high temperature of 59. Some clouds through the overnight hours, potentially Saturday morning. Cool once again, widespread 30s, maybe hanging on to 40s in a few spots. But for the most part, I expect everyone to be at least between 32 and 39. I don't think we'll dip below freezing before we make it back into the 60s tomorrow afternoon in central Georgia. Then we get into Sunday. A little more in the way of cloud cover across the area, potentially some rain once we get into Sunday afternoon. I've got a 30% chance of rain here. This is a weather system that's going to be falling apart as it moves through, so maybe a scattered shower. Any rain we do see will be short lived and it will again be falling apart as it moves through central Georgia. Smooth sailing on Monday for the national championship. Then into Tuesday, the GFS has been very insistent on some rainfall somewhere in the southeast. The Euro has been very insistent on the opposite, so we will see how that shapes up. As of now, we've got a 20% chance of rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then it looks like our next weather system begins to take shape on Thursday and move towards central Georgia by the time we get to next weekend. So the better chance of rain is going to come on Sunday at 30%. As of now, I've got a 20% chance of rain on Tuesday. Now, I alluded to it. This is the forecast for the college football playoff national championship in Los Angeles, and this does not look like a California forecast at all, much less Southern California. Highs only in the low 60s, struggling to get out of the 60s on Tuesday, and this is very rare too. A thunderstorm icon in Los Angeles that is going to be very possible on Tuesday. What's called an atmospheric river is setting up and taking aim at California and it's going to be looking at soggy conditions as we head into championship weekend over the next few days. Of course, Marvin Connor 
on the way out to California right now. Kickoff Monday at 730 our time. School bus forecast for the day ahead. We've got 30s on the way for this afternoon. 52 for the recess hour and 58 when you head home from school. That the high temperature today is going to be right around 59. This is much closer to average, if not right on average for this time of year. Sunny skies to go around. Sunrise comes your way at 738. Here comes the seven day forecast. 60s in the days ahead. 63 for Saturday and Sunday. There's that 30% chance of rain, mainly Sunday evening, then into next week. Partly cloudy skies with another rain chance coming your way on Tuesday and Wednesday.